Hello again. In this video, we are going to add some extra detail into the animation. So let's begin. So right now we have movement on her arms and her legs, and we also get movement on the null object layer, which is controlling the entire body and making her jump. But I want to emphasize that jump. I want to emphasize the motion and the physics, so I want to make some things bounce, for example, her hair. So I am going to take the hair layer right now, press P to bring out position, hold shift and press S to add scale as well. So now I'm going back to frame number zero and clicking on the stopwatch for both of these elements to create keyframes. So you can see that the jumping movement starts on frame number five. And then on frame number 10, the jumping movement reaches it stop. And finally, she is landing on frame number 15. So these three frames contain the entire champ. So I'm going to create a keyframe here for the hair on frame number five. And now that I've done this, I am going to zoom in a little bit. I'm also going to create keyframes for the hair, for both portions of the hair on the frame where she's at the top of her champ. And there I am going to select position and move it a bit upwards. So as you can see, there are a little gap that is starting to show, but don't worry, we'll get to that now because we are going to modify the scale as well. So let's select this keyframe. And first of all, we're going to click on this little link icon. So now that I disable that, I can modify the scale non-proportionally. So I can change horizontal and vertical values individually. So I'm going to start by modifying the one on the right, which is the vertical value, and I'm going to give it 120%. So now that I've modified the scale, I'm going back to the position keyframe and I'm fine tuning it so the gap is not showing anymore. You can always use your arrow keys to do that. Now I'm going to move to frame 15 and I'm going to take the keyframe that's on frame number five, copy and paste it here under frame number 15. But I want to do something extra. I want to add a little bouncing to it. I'm going to go a few frames to the right, let's say frame number 17, and I'm going to add a keyframe here as well. Now I'm going to hit J to go back to frame 15. And on this keyframe, I'm going to do the opposite movement. I'm going to move the position down. So I want this to look as if the hair is being squashed. So I want to modify the scale as well, and I'm going to make it a bit flat. In order to do that, I am reducing the vertical value for scale. So let's zoom out and preview this. And let's see how this works so far. Okay, so. You can get the idea by seeing the movement. So it seems like when she lands, the hair squashes a bit and then goes back to the normal position and scale. So this helps a lot to bring life to the movement and to emphasize the movement of the champ and the landing. So there is a second champ that starts on 20, reaches its peak at 25 and lands on frame number 30. So we're going to take care of that too. So I am going to take all the frames related to the first champ. I'm going to select them all and I'm going to paste them starting on frame number 20. So the keyframes for the first champ starts on keyframe number five and then ends on keyframe number 17. I'm going to copy that over to the second time she champs. Since both champs are basically the same, we can safely copy the keyframes and paste them over. So the same movement on both parts of her hair that starts at frame five and ends on frame number 17 are going to be copied starting from frame 20. Okay, there we go. So far, so good. Okay, so let's do the same thing for the bottom portion. So I'm going to bring out position and scale now we're going to click on the stopwatch to create the first 
keyframe on frame number zero and then on frame number five too. So frame number 10 is the frame where she jumps. So we'll create keyframes there. And I can already create the keyframes for frame number 15 and frame number 17. So now let's start by modifying the keyframes on frame number 10. So right here, when she is at the top of her champ, I want her hair, the bottom portion of her hair to do the same as the top. I want it to move up a bit. Now I want to start playing with the scale values a bit. So I'm going to unlink the proportions and start changing them. So I think I want the hair to be shrinking a bit at the very top of her champ, as if it were squashing just a tiny bit around here, maybe 85% will do. So this is how it will look like. Okay, so far so good. So the hair is moving up where she jumps and is squashing a bit, but we need to take care of the landing. Right here, I want to modify this position to be down a bit. Scale should be 115 vertical, of course. So at this moment I'm fine tuning the position because again I don't want any gaps to appear so I want this to look natural so I'm fine tuning it a little bit. I want it to look like it's connected to the back of the head so it looks natural. Okay about here will do. As you can see this makes much more sense now. So now I'm going to fine tune this keyframe a bit. I think I want to emphasize the scale I want to switch it to 120. Okay, there we go. This bouncing movement looks much better now. And maybe when she's at the top of her champ, it should be even smaller. So let's try 80%. So let's see how this is working right now. Okay, so now that I've decided on everything, I'm going to take every keyframe starting from frame number 5 until the frame number 17 and I'm going to copy and now I'll stand on frame number 20 and hit paste. Okay, so this is looking good at the moment, everything looks correct. So now I want to keep emphasizing this champing movement. I want the torso to expand and contract a bit while she jumps. So I'm going to select the torso layer and bring out position and scale. I'm going to create the first keyframe here on zero for both values and again on frame number five. And I'll also create keyframes for number 10, number 15 and number 17. So here where she is jumping, I want the position of her torso to be a bit up to emphasize the fact that her body is stretching as she is doing it. So I'm going to move the position a bit here, but as you can see, we are almost reaching the top edge of the canvas. So that will be an issue I'll have to solve later on. But for now, let's limit our position to a place where it doesn't bother and it doesn't overlap the edge of the canvas. So around here will do. And then I am going to zoom out and I'm going to preview the animation. So let's see how it looks like. There we go. It's working. It helps complement the movement of the champ. And I think I will leave scale out of it right now because if I change it, I will change everything that's parented to the torso as well. And as you can see, that looks a bit weird. So I am going to just click on this stopwatch to remove every keyframe under scale. And there we go. Now that we are finished with the torso, we are going to do the same thing that we did with the portions of the hair, which is copying and pasting every keyframe that we use to the second champ. Okay, so far so good. I think this is looking quite good at the moment. 
I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see it better. Okay, so next I'm going to solve the issue that I mentioned before, the fact that the character is too close to the edge of the canvas. So I'm going to take the null object, bring scale and type 95%. So what I'm doing here is reducing the size of the entire character. Since everything on her body is linked to the null object, if I change the scale of the null object, I will change the scale of her entire body. So that is very useful. So as you can see, the null object that we created a few videos ago is very powerful and can do a lot of things. So I have created a keyframe for scale on the null object because I want this change to be global. I don't want to animate this, I want this change to affect the entire timeline, so no keyframe is necessary. Ok, we are done for now, on the next video we will be adding some ease into this animation. So see you there.